So we have a very simple application here. It basically allows to you to add some people with some details. Let's simply just add something here. And it will be shown basically in this list here. Now I generated this application with the Angular CLI, which you can find at this URL here. And while our application works perfectly, what we want to do now is to create something which we can deploy in production. So basically we have to create a production build. Now, if you go to the GitHub side of Angular CLI, there's actually some documentation already on how you can create a build. So the main command here is ng build, which will then create some build artifacts which are stored in this directory. There are even further parameters then, like a target parameter which allows you to specify the environment where you want to deploy to. So let's quickly try this out on our project here. So what I'm going to do is to fire up here my terminal within my Visual Studio Code editor. And let's then execute ng-build. The CLI using Webpack behind the scenes is bundling up our application here. Now if you open up the file explorer, we see that we have a disk directory and there are a couple of files inside there. For instance, let's open the main bundle here. And you can see that basically it got compiled. However, this is not yet compiled and minified. So to do that, we basically have to provide the prod parameter. Now, if you again go to our this folder here and open up the main JS file again, we see that now it got minified into this small bundle. But we can go even further. Like if you take a look at our disk folder, and we take our main JS bundle, let's print out here the size, you can see we are around 800 kilobytes of size here. Now Angular has a mechanism called AOT compiler. And in fact, if you go to the official website on the documentation of Angular 2, you basically have a cookbook there which explains the details behind the AOT compilation process. So in a nutshell, what it does is it basically analyzes your templates of your components. It tries to figure out what you are doing inside those templates and then it translates them into pure JavaScript code. So in this way, you don't have to ship the entire Angular 2 compiler into production, basically the compiler which at runtime interprets your templates and does the data binding stuff and so on but you will rather ship just plain JavaScript. Now in this cookbook, you get quite a good description on how to do the AT compilation by adapting your TS config file and by doing a couple of other optimizations, like also installing the NGC compiler and then passing it in some properties like here, the TS config AOT file, which we will then use to boot up our AOT comp compiled application. You can also see that you have to slightly adapt here your main TS file. So rather than importing the platform browser dynamic as we do usually, and also here using the platform browser dynamic function, you rather use the platform browser and then you use that bootstrap module factory instead of just bootstrap module and pass in also the compiled, the AOT compiled module factory. Now let's see how this works with the Angular CLI. In order to compile our application with the Angular CLI using AOT, all we have to do actually is to pass it the AOT flag. So we again use the minus minus prod and then also the minus minus AOT. Now we again start the compilation process. Great, and if we now go to our disk folder again, and we open up here our main TS file, it changed slightly from the first time, but there's no notable difference right now just by looking at this file. However, if we look at the size now of our JS file, we see that it reduced already by nearly half of the size. But let's see whether it works actually, our application. So let's jump into that disk folder. And I use something called HTTP server, which is a node module, which I installed globally and I boot that up on that disk folder here, then it will be served here at localhost 111. Let's refresh. And strange 
Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work out of the box. So let's have a look. And it says something like here, return type of public method from exported class has or is using some name observable from an external module. So let's go into that people service and have a look. And in fact, what we have here is basically we have a method fetch people. It returns an observable because this function here returns an observable, but actually we don't import observable at any point here. So let's do that quickly. Import statement from RxJS observable. We use the observable and here we simply return an observable of any. So I'm showing you this because it is important to explicitly state here the types which you are returning and to import everything your application needs because that's fundamental if you want to do IoT compilation. Now again, let's open up here our shell here. Again, let's do the ng build prod with IoT. Again, let's jump into the H this directory, use our HTTP server. Let's refresh our application and look there, our application works as we expect. Great, so this was really, really simple. So we didn't have to adapt our main TS file, like to change how Angular is being bootstrapped when we run it in a browser or when we do AUT compilation, we even didn't have to adapt our TS config file but all we had to do is to add that minus minus AOT flag. So huge kudos to the Angular CLI team for making this so, so simple.